Good day everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's episode, I'll be explaining the biographical or historical literary approach or literary criticism. In this video, I am interchangeably using the biographical and the historical because for me, one implies the other or they are very much related and connected. Though most scholars and most uh, thinkers and literary critiques distinguish the two, but I personally consider them as one. So what is the biographical approach in literary criticism? The biographical approach assumes that meaning always rests in the author. In other words, the meaning of text, artworks, are always connected with the author. So without the author, the work of art or the work of literature is meaningless. That is why when one does literary criticism, one always goes back to the author. So one has to discover the, the intent of the author, the experiences of the author as it is reflected in the work, the, the mind of the author, the psychology of the author, the emotional state of the author, the disposition, the background, and of course, the history of the author. Because if one speaks of the life of the author, it is inevitable not to look into the milieu, the temporal milieu, the history in which the work was created. And of course, if one looks at or looks into the life of the author and of course the history, the time when it was written, one cannot also abnegate the political, economic, sociological or social and cultural background or context of the text. So when one does biographical, one would always consider the historical and the context which is composed of a lot of views and elements. So this only shows that the biographical approach to literature or literature itself is interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary. So you just don't study literature, but you also need to know facts about history, about politics, about the economics, about the background and context of the work of literature. So one has to know a lot of things. So the research is not only focused, but it's multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary. So it asks the following question. What aspects of the author's personal life are relevant to the story or the work? It also asks the question, what stated beliefs of the author are reflected or revealed in the work? Does the author support values or views of his contemporaries? Does he reflect the values and, and philosophies and, and views of his times? What are the intentions, messages, uh, and concerns, and challenges, and issues of the author as reflected in the work? Do the events in the work or the story correspond to the experience of the author? And also, do the characters of the story or the work of literature or even of art reflect the character or personality of the author or the personalities of certain people at that time whom the author met or somebody who has influenced or has, has inspired the author to some extent. So the biographical is always interchangeable with the historical. So that's what we call the biographical approach. We can never ignore the author and his background in our interpretation of the text. Well, it has advantages because it gives you a multiple views and meanings and interpretation of the text as you look into the life of the author, the thoughts of the author, the feelings of the author, the psychology of the author, the time of the author, and other elements of the cultural, temporal, sociological, political milieu. But the critics would say it's, it's too complicated if you look at uh, or interpret literature that way. Also, they say that the disadvantage of the biographical is that it's too centered in the author. And for them, they always invoke the death of the author. In other words, for the critics, that literary works are independent from its author because the moment the author dies there is no way or it's impossible to always recall or retrieve the real intention so it's futile to look into the life and works uh, the life and the experiences of the the author so the text has to be interpreted here and now how is it relevant to the time of the reader so that's the disadvantage of 
the biographical and historical approach. So thank you for watching and listening. Please click like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please be updated with the next episode.